What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Odin coming back with another box office breakdown for this weekend, which saw the second weekend drop off of Thor Love and Thunder going to 68% from last week, which is one of the highest in the entire history of the MCU. So things aren't looking all that good for the current state of the MCU. And though Thor Love and Thunder's bottom line might be okay when everything is set and done based on the numbers that we have available at the moment, those of course can change as the weeks go on if the very, very bad word of mouth continues. It is still a situation, nonetheless, where Thor Love and Thunder, compared to the previous Thor film, is going to be coming in a lot shorter, and we're also starting to see this progressive decline in MCU films. And so, will this type of decline continue into the future? Who really knows at this point? We'll talk about this. We'll also talk about the brand new releases of a couple other films, including Where the Crawdads Sing, one I'm sure everyone and their mother is excited about, and a other fil another film called Pause of Fury, Legend of Hank which I'm sure everyone's also excited to dive into as well. Let's first start off talking about Thor Love and Thunder, as it talks about here from Deadline. It's dropping 68% in its weekend drop-off, or its second weekend drop-off. As it says right here, it's having a great fall for the second weekend to $46 million. It's talking here about the domestic drop-off. The sequel isn't even... This is how bad things really are at this point. It says, the sequel isn't even a theatrical day and date day and date day and date release like Black Widow was last year on Disney Plus remember that was the big excuse that they tried to use last year saying well the reason why the film had such a massive drop off Black Widow that is is because it had a day and day release on on Disney Plus well guess what Thor Love and Thunder is having a very similar drop off and so either something else was going on with Black Widow or we are still seeing some of the problems that existed with Black Widow continuing on in Thor Love and Thunder Again, I'll let you decide for yourselves. While the Taika-directed movie improved beyond its high $130 million opening estimates last weekend into the $144 million range, first off, please stop trying to rewrite your own history. We all know that there were a lot higher projections for this movie before the film came out, and then all of a sudden we started to realize, oh, Lightyear, oh, that film is not doing nearly as well. Ooh, maybe we need to tighten our projections down a little bit. Yeah, let's let's stop trying to rewrite our history deadline. It's clear that those sour audience exits of a B-plus cinema score, and yeah, sour, sour, sour audience exits of a B-plus. In what world is a B-plus a sour note? This is the reason why no one should ever take cinema score seriously whatsoever. They never provide any of their data, and all they ever say is, hey, this is the score, trust us. Well, I haven't trusted Cinema Score since they were born, and uh, I would recommend not anyone else trust them either. It goes on to say that Thor's second weekend drop ranks amongst the MCU's worst, including Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which, remember, started $150 million ahead of where Thor Love and Thunder did, having a 67% drop, Black Widow 68% drop, which they're just going to remind you again about the Disney Plus era. <laughs> well, it didn't really flop because, you know, we got to take into account the Disney Plus stuff. Forget about Spider-Man No Way Home, 68% drop, because remember that film did fall on Christmas. Not to mention, of course, this film almost made $2 billion. They're talking about Spider-Man No Way Home, not nearly in the same category whatsoever. Well, why Disney has a different brag on Thor Love and Thunder, and that's that the superhero movie is about to cross half a billion dollars worldwide. Domestic stands at 233.2, global at 498. Yeah, that would be a brag if the film didn't need to make $625 million just to be able to break even, and though it is currently on pace and on projection to be able to reach that amount, the fact that it's going to be able to maybe have, what, $50 million in net profit when everything is said and done, when you have a massive investment in a film like that, let's just say, not nearly as impressive as a film like Top Gun Maverick or even a Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, which looks at hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars in net profit versus the 50 for Thor Love and Thunder for a film that people thought that I'm sure Disney thought was going to be a knock out of the park, was just going to be able to continue that momentum going forward. Oh no, it turns out that when you put Taika's, uh, <laughs> when you put Taika Waititi's ego on full blast, when you let him turn it up to 100, people say, yeah, you know what? It's not really all that funny. Yeah. If you want to see a really great uh, teardown of his entire plot for Thor Love and Thunder, check out the uh, pitch meetings. It's just phenomenal on it. But speaking of greater films, or much better films, Top Gun Maverick hits $617.9 million by the end of the day today here talking about the uh, domestic market. So insane numbers there. What I also find to be most... Uh, 
hilarious about this article from our bo- our bunny Tony, as I like to call him. Uh, Tony over on Deadline says, clearly something isn't resonating with fans. Now, he won't say exactly what those things are. He claims that Doctor Strange and Eternals were Byzantine. I, I guess he's trying to say, like, oh, kind of weird and quirky. and But uh, I guess he's trying to make an excuse there. But I remember when he was going to bat for all of the MCU films that have come out at this point. So I love how he's like, clearly something's not resonating. Even though critics enjoy the film, clearly th- something's not not resonating. Yeah, what is it, Tony? You're going to talk a little bit about why people maybe don't want to see this film or why it's got bad word of mouth? Oh, that's right. You're not going to. So shut up. Anyway, going into the actual domestic numbers, 46 million, a 68% drop domestically for Thor Love and Thunder. Again, one of the worst drops in MCU history. We have Minions Rise of Gru dropping 26, rather having another $26 million weekend, dropping only 44% in its third week of release, making insane amounts of money already. Where the Crawdads Sing, new film from Sony, $17 million, a book that's been adapted into a movie, seems to be doing quite well for what the kind of film that it is. Having about a $24 million budget or so, it is on a pretty good pace to make its money back at this point, if those numbers continue. Top four, still in the top four, first time probably out of the top three, actually, to be honest, after eight weeks, took eight weeks for them to get the film to this point, still making $12 million, a 23% hold in its eighth week of release, is Top Gun Maverick. Again, insane numbers there from Paramount. Mount. And then rounding out the top five is Elvis from Warner Brothers, which even though the film has still a little ways to go, it is making up some of the ground that it lost on previous releases or on previous weeks. And so it could still potentially make its money back, but it's still slow going at this point in time for the Warner Brothers film. We also had the new release of Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank, which only made $6.2 million. So even though Paramount's having a lot of luck with Top Gun Maverick, not nearly as much for Pause of Fury and The Legend of Hank as everyone is going to see Minions instead. Look at the worldwide numbers. Thor 11 Thunders at 497.8, so almost at $500 million. Even at that number, though, still about $125 million off from its break-even. And though I suspect the film will get to that point, especially with very little competition in its wake, it's not looking like it's going to be that big of a box office haul for the MCU Disney flick. Very different story for Minions, which is already making mass amounts of profits now at $532.7 million worldwide. Where the Crawdads sing at $17 million in the new release. Top Gun Maverick now at $1.2 billion. That's right, billion with a B. Uh, again, we could potentially see this film even get to the heights of $1.3 billion by the end of its run as it just continues to do incredibly well. Um, I think that $1.3 billion is definitely in the cards for the film. I think that it's possible the fact that it's at $1.23 billion is already more than what anyone would have suspected for this fantastic film film, the solid film, which I'd recommend everyone to go see. Also, look at that split between domestic and international. That's also something that's very unheard of because not only are people loving it domestically, you have also about an equal amount of love internationally. Even though the international number may not be as high as some of the MCU or superhero films have been in the past, the fact that it's still as solid as it is I again think speaks volumes to the actual film property itself. As I mentioned with Elvis at $185.6 million worldwide, wouldn't be a terrible number except for the fact that the film costs around $85 million to actually make. You look at Pause of Fury at $6.25 million, Jurassic World Dominion crossing the $900 million mark worldwide, not likely going to get to a billion, but hey, at least it's in that $900 million territory, so I guess kudos to them for still making money, though. Still giving a lot of money to the CCP in China. And Lightyear continues to do nothing, which is just hilarious to actually see. Going now over to my website, OMBReviews.com. If you want to see some box office charting, that is the place to be. Let's go ahead and do some projections for the Thor Love and Thunder film. So based off the $497.8 million after the first two weeks of release, I'm projecting the film to make somewhere between $711.2 million and $995 million. I do not suspect it at all getting close to that max number. Again, that would be it having to do as well well as or maybe a little bit less than Top Gun Maverick which would mean essentially to double what it's made so far. The numbers really aren't panning out for that. The word of mouth isn't really helping that whatsoever. So that's not a very likely scenario for it to actually hit. This is all just based off of how much money it has made up to this point. So I would suspect the film will probably get closer to that minimum projection. Would not be surprised if the number some ends up being somewhere between 75 and 65% as far as based upon its first two weeks of release. And that means, yes, based on the fact that I just said 75%, you could actually see this film be underneath that $700 million mark 
meaning you could have the film at least be only slightly above its break-even point. I still think it's going to hit the break-even just based off of the, the general numbers and the history of it. Again, there's really no way to try it. You know, I'm not going to try and spin that away because I'm always going to be up in front and honest with y'all because based on these numbers, it looks like the film is going to be able to make its money back. But again, when you look at this number right here, $51.7 million as being a more likely number as far as the net profit is concerned, that is just abysmal. You compare that to Minions Rise of Gru, which had a projection of 215. Jurassic World Dominion had a projection of 288. Top Gun Maverick had a projection of 222. And you have a couple of these, or rather, you have specifically Top Gun Maverick over exceeding overdoing even my own projections because it's just doing that well. You have Top Gun Maverick actually getting to $487 million in net gain profits. Jurassic World Dominion almost to $300 million in net gain profits. Minion Rise of Gru getting close to seven, uh, rather getting close to $200 million. And so these are all films that are doing incredibly well. Whereas you have Thor Love and Thunder still $76 million in the red. Maybe it gets that $50 million in the positive number, but it's going to be interesting to follow nonetheless. What we can see say, though, is it's not going to be anywhere near Doctor Strange 2, and that should be a huge red flag to the people working over at Disney and working over at the MCU. But those are the numbers as they stand. What are y'all's thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, lap that fire button, and honestly, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, God bless.